Hi everyone, what's up? In this video, I'm going to cover very important functions asked in PySpark interviews, that is, date functions. We're going to go through all the important date functions and try to understand them using examples. In most PySpark rated coding rounds, you will definitely find a question in which you would have to use one of these date functions. In fact, not just PySpark, these functions are asked even as SQL queries. This video is part of a playlist in which I will cover an important topic asked in Spark interviews in each of them. All the questions will be coding based and I will solve and explain everything in detail. Along with this, I will also explain how to approach these kind of questions. As I said before, today we will cover date functions in a more conceptual way while in the next video, we will solve some questions related to these functions. So do subscribe and stay tuned. Before we get started, if you haven't seen my videos on Data Engineer interview experience, then click on the i button to watch all of them. And if you're interested in knowing how I got shortlisted for all these interviews, then check out my video on how to get shortlisted as a data engineer and as a senior data engineer. That's also in the i button as well as in the description. Okay, so enough with the intro, let's move on to the actual video now. So here we are on the database notebook. And this time I'm using two CSV files from Kaggle, unlike my previous video in which I had used only one. So if you haven't seen that video, then that's also in the i button. Do check it out after you've seen this. In this particular video, I'm going to explain to you all the important date functions. And uh, using these two data set, I'm going to give you some examples so that you can understand them in a better way. So let's take a look at the data sets. So the first one is sales and we have order date order id product and address so the order date is our main concern here the main the important column here which we are going to frequently use in this video now moving on to the second uh, uh, data set which is orders which also has order id quantity and price each well this data set is important but for the next video in which i'm going to list down some of the questions in that will be solved using the date functions that I'm going to explain in this video. So without further ado, let's take a look at each of the date functions one by one. How to find out and format current date or timestamp. We use current date function which returns current system date without time in PySpark date type which is in format yyyymmdd and current timestamp is a function that returns current system date time in PySpark timestamp type, which is a format, well, as you can see. So these two formats are very important. It's better if you memorize them, they're pretty straightforward. And why I'm saying this will be impacted in the later functions. So this is how you can find out the current date and current timestamp. They are pretty straightforward. And you can see it returns you these kind of values. So as I'm recording this on 27th, so this is the value I'm getting. And uh, this is nothing but the system date time. Let's move on to the next set of functions. So now that you know how to get the current date and current timestamp, let's look into how you can format those dates. So the first function is date format. It is used to format a date or timestamp column in a data frame to a specified date or time format. It requires the first argument to be in yyyymmdd or in a timestamp format as shown on the screen. Otherwise, it will populate null. So what does this mean? Let's say your first argument or the first columns format is not in an acceptable format, which are these two, then the resultant columns output will be null. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. So first, how we calculate date format. So we just write date format. And the, as I said, the first argument will be the column. Second argument will be our uh, resultant format. So as you can see, I'm creating a new column called new order date str from order date order date is right here and i'm just picking the year month and day and that is happening because i have given this particular format now coming back to why it will populate null let me show you with an example so here i have a couple of columns so first is other format one which is again formed by order date but this time i am changing the format to a non-acceptable format so i've used mmdd yyy so here you can see it is populated this way. Now using this other format one, I'm creating a second column called other format two. And this time I gave a random format. Now the resultant format does not matter in this case. What matters is our input format because my input format is not in acceptable 
uh, date formats so the other format too is populated with null let's see the acceptable date formats again so these are the acceptable date format so always remember if you want to use not just date format any date function on a particular um, string uh, column or date column the input format should be these okay so if it is clear then let's move on to the next set of functions so the next function is to date it converts a string column representing a date or timestamp into date type column in a data frame and to timestamp it converts a string column representing a date or timestamp into a timestamp type column so basically these two function will uh, take a string and convert it into a date type now for these two also there are acceptable formats that we discussed for date format the formats are as you can see uh, using them is uh, like similar to date format but here you don't have to give any you know uh, particular formats you can just mention the input column now to date returns you a date type and to timestamp returns to a timestamp let's see the result we have order date and then we have a new date str that we created using the date format now using them we created new order date and order timestamp as you can see and don't worry about the code or the data set like i said earlier both the notebook and the data sets will be available in the description so these are pretty straightforward but let's look into what happens when you apply to date to a invalid date string now let's say i have columns order date which is in string then new order date str that i created using date format which is also in string that's why i've written new str and uh, using this new order date str i convert into mmddyyy format i'm doing this using date format and i'm con and i'm creating new order date str2 this is a new column now using this new column then again i'm creating another column but this time i'm using to date in order to show you what happens when i use invalid or non acceptable date formats so here is the result as you can see we have order date we have the new order date str which we created earlier then we have the new order date str2 which we created here and as you can see it is in mmdd and yyy format now using this i created the new order date 2 but as you can see the to date function did not work it returned me null why just like the date format the input format of the column was not in an acceptable uh, format so i hope this thing is clear and it's not just with to date even two timestamp would fail to give you a right solution if your input format is not correct so you can try this out these three formatting functions are pretty straightforward just the one thing you have to remember as i'm stressing on repeatedly is the acceptable date formats let's look into some other functions now so before we jump on to other date functions there there's one thing i want to discuss that is the use case of to date and date format so date format is used when someone wants to return a particular format for visualization only and it won't be used further as an input to any of the date function why i'm saying this because let's say i created a column called new date str2 just for visualization i used this particular format where i'm using mm dd yyy now this column i cannot use to retain anything like i cannot apply other date functions on top of this column this is just for visualization so that is the use case of date format now what is the use case of to date or to timestamp when you want to convert a date string which is in acceptable date format to a date type and the resulting format will be yyyy mmdd same is for to timestamp just it will return timestamp type so basically you have a string data type and uh, in the string data type you have certain date obviously and you are you want to convert it into a date format you want to convert it into a date type then we use to date and if you want to convert it into a timestamp then we use to timestamp why we use these two so that the other date functions that we are going to discuss later on in this video we can apply those things so i hope this use case which is very important i wanted to discuss this is clear let's look at the other date functions now now let's take a look at other date functions how to add or subtract from a date field so first is add months which is used to add or subtract a specified number of months to a date or timestamp column in a data frame so it takes two arguments the column representing the date or timestamp and the number of months you want to add or subtract now you can see in the example what i've done 
I'm adding two months to new order date and I'm subtracting three months to new order date and creating these two columns. So in order to add, I'm using a positive integer and in order to subtract, I'm using a negative integer. Now, if you want to add number of days to a given date, then I use date add. And if you want to subtract number of days from a given date, then I use date sub. And same thing you can see in the example below. There is add two days. This is the column I'm creating and I'm adding two days to the new order date. Same thing I'm doing with the sub four days where I'm subtracting four days from the new order date. And let's take a look at the result. So this is the new order date that we created in the previous slide. And as you can see, I'm adding two months here, which from 0, 01, it becomes 0, 03. And I'm subtracting three months from the new order date. So it goes back to the previous year and, and returns me October. And same thing. So if you see, I'm adding two days to this particular date. So it becomes from 22 to 24. And uh, if I subtract four days, then uh, 22 minus four gives me 18. So sim similarly, you can try these uh, function and use your inputs to understand this better. Let's move on. Moving on, how to find the difference between two dates. So in order to do so, we use date diff. And the first argument is the end date and second argument is the start date. So it is used to calculate the difference in days between two date columns in a data frame. Uh, it takes two arguments, the two date columns to calculate the difference between. So one thing to be noted here is in order to apply this date diff, your two columns should be in date type. So here I'm creating current date diff and what I'm doing is I'm subtracting uh, current date and new order date and same thing I'm doing um, here. So you can see in the result, I have current date diff. Uh, the current date is 27th and new order date, which was my data set is 22, but the year is 2020. So this gives me the difference in days, number of days between these two dates. So that's it for the date diff. Let's take a look at the next function. Coming to how to find the months between two dates. So for that, we use months underscore between and the first argument is end. The second argument is start. So it is used to calculate the difference in months between two date or a timestamp column in a data frame. So as you can see, I've also written it takes two arguments, the two date or two timestamp to calculate the difference between them. And uh, in order to do so, what I'm doing here is I am creating a current months diff and I'm using months between and the, the columns are first one is current date and the second one is new order date. So this will return me difference between the two dates in months. Let's take a look at the answer. So we have 27th and here we have 22 and the year you can see 2020 and 2024. So the current difference between these two dates in months are as such. So I know these uh, functions are pretty straightforward, but they will be very handy when we solve the problems in the next video. So let's keep the thing going. Now again, a set of very straightforward date functions, how to find out specific part of a date. So we want year, quarter, month and day. So these are pretty self-explanatory what they do. Year returns the year and the others as the name describes. Now here, in order to apply the function, you just have to write the function name and inside the column name, which you want to convert. You can also give a string column, a uh, string value here in order to get the year out of that string value. Now the why I've commented the day method because the day method is only present in the new version that is 3.5.0 and if I and uh, the version I'm using here is 3.3.2 so if I run this this will definitely give me an error because it doesn't have the day function in its class so if you are using 3.5.0 in your practice then you can also try the day function let's take a look at the result so we have new order date so as you can see it returned us correctly the year is 2020 the quarter is first and the month is also first. Um, let's move on to the next functions. So coming to the second last part of the video, how to find out specific day and week of a period. So day of the week extracts the day of a week from a date or a timestamp column in a data frame. Now Monday is represented by one, Tuesday by two and so on until Sunday, which is represented by seven. The next three are pretty self-explanatory. They do what their name, name describes and the last day returns to the last day of a month for a given date or a timestamp column. So basically, let's take the first month of this year, which is January. 
and uh, doesn't matter what the date is in in our input it will always return us 31st january 2024 so let's take a look how you can apply them uh, similar to the year month and uh, quarter you can uh, just write the function name and you can give your input the only catch is the input should be in date or timestamp format so let's take a look at the result so we have a new order date here the day of the week is 4 then day of the month is 22 day of the year is 22 and week of the year is 4 and as you can see because it was january month so it returned us 31st january 2020 so i hope this is clear let's move on to the last part now so coming to the last and very important part of the video that is working with unix time so what is unix time unix time is the time in seconds from january 1st 1970 to the very moment you call for so this particular time stamp is nothing but unix epoch now there are two functions that make use of unix time first one is unix time stamp which is used to convert a date or a time stamp to a unix time stamp value now how this unix time stamp looks we'll take a look at it in a minute the second function is from unix time it converts the unix time stamp value to a string column let's take a look at how we can apply them so i'm creating two columns using the unix time stamp and in the first one i have used a date column in the second one i have used a time stamp column let's take a look at the result so here is my date column that is new order date which generated this particular unix time stamp value now you can see uh, in the schema the unix time stamp uh, function generates a long data type now here i have order time stamp column which has a time stamp value which in turn generated a different kind of unix time stamp why is it because the dates are same but still you get a different time stamp value the reason is in the first date by default we are taking the hours minute and seconds that's zero while in the second date you can see there is some hour minute and second present so there is 21 and 25 because of this only the unix time stamp value is different let's take a look at from unix time stamp so i am creating two column using this particular method In the first one I have not given the output format while in the second one I have defined an output format and uh, here is the result so by default it gave me the answer in this format and it generated a string value and in the second one because I had defined an output format so it returned in this particular format value so that's it for the unix timestamp and from unix time it might be a little confusing but I would urge you to try this out on your own it will make things more clear Now that we have covered all the important date functions asked in the interviews, we are ready to solve some coding questions using them. But before you do so, I would request you to download the notebook and the data set from the link in the description so that you can practice them. Most of them are pretty straightforward, but they are asked in almost every interviews. If you made it this far, then show some support by subscribing. I will make a set of videos on every important PySpark topic and their coding question. Finally, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.